Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today we're exploring how creatine can protect your cardiovascular health by improving blood flow and supporting your arteries. Joining me is my co host, Alara Skye who brings a focused perspective on natural health. Ilara, it's always good to have you here. Thank you, Ethan. I'm looking forward to discussing this topic because many of us think of creatine as just a workout supplement. However, new research shows that it can play a significant role in supporting heart health, especially as we age. Exactly. According to recent findings, creatine has been linked to increased artery flexibility in older adults after just four weeks of daily use. This is important because flexible arteries mean better blood flow and a lower risk of cardiovascular issues. Could you elaborate on how that study was set up, Alara? Sure. The study, published in the journal Nutrients, involved older adults who weren't very active. They took creatine daily for four weeks, then switched to a placebo. Researchers measured how well the participants' arteries could expand and contract. After four weeks of using creatine, the arteries showed improved function while the placebo period showed no such benefits. That's a major discovery. The participants had better flow-mediated dilation, or FMD, which is a test to see how much arteries expand when blood flow increases. Even a small improvement in FMD can reduce the risk of heart problems. Did the participants also see any other health changes? Yes. They experienced lower fasting blood sugar levels, which moved from borderline pre-diabetic to healthier ranges. Their triglycerides, a type of fat in the blood, also dropped significantly. All of these changes happened without any exercise program or major diet shifts. They simply added creatine to their daily routine. That's remarkable. It suggests that creatine supports vascular health, not just muscle performance. There's also some interesting discussion about why it works so well. One explanation is that creatine spares the amino acid arginine, which your body uses to produce nitric oxide. Nitric oxide keeps blood vessels flexible. What else is going on behind the scenes? Another key factor is creatine's role in supporting ATP, or adenosine triphosphate. ATP is the energy currency for all cells, including blood vessels. When the arteries have enough energy, they stay flexible. In smaller vessels, potassium ion pumps also require consistent ATP to regulate blood flow. Because creatine helps supply steady energy, it supports these pumps, further improving oxygen delivery. And importantly, these benefits weren't seen with the placebo, which shows that creatine itself was driving the improvements. Another study, this time in Clinical Nutrition ESPIN, took a shorter-term look at creatine. It checked what happened after just one week of creatine use in older men. How did that play out? In only seven days, researchers observed decreased artery stiffness. Their measurement dropped from 8.7 to 8.2, which is quite significant over such a short time. Systolic blood pressure, a top number reading, also trended lower, moving from 144 down to around 136. Although it wasn't statistically significant at that stage, it pointed to a positive effect that might become more pronounced with ongoing use. That quick improvement really underscores creatine's potential. Of course, this doesn't mean you should ignore other healthy lifestyle choices. But for people aiming to support their cardiovascular health, Creatine appears to be a safe and beneficial addition. In that seven-day study, it also didn't cause extra strain on the heart, which is an important factor. Definitely. We want interventions that improve blood vessel health without putting extra stress on the heart. And these studies suggest that creatine can do just that. So if someone wants to raise their creatine levels, they can start with dietary sources like grass-fed beef. Supplements are an option too, especially for those who don't eat meat. Yes. People following vegetarian or vegan diets don't get much or any creatine from plant foods. Since our bodies only produce about 1 to 2 grams of creatine a day, that may not be enough to optimize these vascular benefits. If you're in that category, you might consider re-evaluating your diet or supplementing with creatine. It's best to think of supplements as a way to bridge gaps rather than a total replacement for a balanced diet. Creatine monohydrate is the form that's been studied extensively. And the typical recommendation is 3 to 5 grams per day. Taking more than that 
can lead to issues like bloating or loose stools, so it's wise to stay in the proven range. Good point. More isn't always better. Another factor that gets mentioned is reducing linoleic acid, or LA, in your diet. It's found in vegetable oils like soybean, corn, and safflower. Elevated LA can undermine cellular energy production, which in turn might cancel out some of creatine's benefits. Could you clarify why that matters? Certainly. When you have a diet high in linoleic acid, it can disrupt how your cells handle energy, leading to inflammation and poorer energy efficiency. Even if you're taking creatine, a high intake of LA can work against you. So it's helpful to remove or drastically reduce these oils from your diet. Switching to healthier fats like tallow, ghee, or grass-fed butter can make a real difference. And it's not just oils at home. A lot of restaurant meals use these vegetable oils, and many packaged snacks are cooked or processed with them. Checking labels and asking questions when you dine out can help you sidestep hidden sources of L.A. It's an approach that supports overall heart health, not just the benefits from creatine. Exactly. This is more about finding balanced, sustainable changes that nourish your body. And with creatine in the mix, you're providing extra energy resources for your blood vessels. It's a simple way to help keep your arteries flexible, lower your risk of heart problems, and even support healthier blood sugar and triglyceride levels. I think it's also helpful to note how fast these improvements can appear. Some studies observe changes in arterial stiffness within a week, while others tracked improvements after a month. It's encouraging for those who want to see tangible results in a relatively short span of time. Yes, it's quite motivating to know you could feel or measure benefits quickly, but we should still treat this as part of a broader lifestyle approach. It's important to look at overall diet quality, minimize ultra-processed foods, and consider regular activity. Creatine can help, but we shouldn't rely on it as a standalone solution for everything. Well said. It fits into an overall plan that includes proper nutrition, movement, and mindful choices about which fats you consume. Before we wrap up, let's touch on the common questions people have. For instance, many wonder if creatine still helps if they aren't exercising regularly. According to the studies mentioned, yes, it does. The participants in these trials weren't engaging in exercise programs, yet they still saw significant improvements in artery flexibility, blood flow, fasting glucose, and triglycerides. That's a strong indication that creatine's effects are not solely tied to vigorous workouts. Another question concerns safety, particularly for older adults or those with certain health conditions. Based on the research, creatine appears safe and doesn't increase the heart's workload. The recommended dose of 3 to 5 grams daily generally avoids side effects. As always, it's wise to stay aware of any changes you might feel and discuss concerns with a qualified health professional if necessary. Absolutely. Safety is always important, but these studies suggest that at moderate doses, creatine is well tolerated, no serious side effects were reported, and blood pressure trended in a better direction instead of spiking. It's a promising area of research for those looking to support cardiovascular health alongside other healthy habits. Exactly. So, for anyone looking to incorporate creatine, start with foods like grass fed beef if that's in your diet. If not, or if you need additional support, Look for a high-quality creatine monohydrate supplement without additives. Aim for 3 to 5 grams a day and avoid unnecessary extra servings. And don't forget to reduce sources of linoleic acid. Cutting out those vegetable oils and processed snacks goes a long way toward making your cells more energy efficient. It's a simple but often overlooked step that can enhance creatine's positive impact on vascular health. This has been a thorough look at how creatine might benefit cardiovascular health. We've discussed the research findings, how it works at a cellular level, and practical steps you can take to optimize your intake. Anything you'd like to add before we close, Alara? I would just emphasize that although creatine can be a powerful ally for arterial flexibility and metabolic health, a balanced approach is key. Pay attention to your overall diet, manage stress levels, and stay informed. Small but consistent changes usually deliver the best results over time. Well said. Thank you, Alara, for your insights. And thank you to everyone tuning in to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, reminding you that protecting your vascular health is more achievable than it might seem. With evidence-backed strategies like creatine supplementation, along with smart dietary choices, you can help support your heart and overall wellness. We'll see you next time.
Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.